Freeze French Horn Driver and Retriever Tool. This is a tool that was designed by Freeze in, to enable us to remove dents from the bell section of a French horn, rotating all the way up, all the way around, past the first branch, to the rotor. This tool will save us a lot of money, save our customers a lot of money, and a lot of grief, as we will not have to literally unsolder their horn. It uses our famous Freeze N57G dent bolts that we have over here. And in the larger part of the instrument, we have larger dent bolts. Okay, these are too large, but obviously the set continues from our largest size, that's 0.75, three quarters of an inch, into the next set of dent bolts. Now you should understand that the series runs uh, A and B. It should be noted though, B is the smaller of the half sizes. A is the step above it. So one B would be first, one A would be second. Okay? You would then you need to use the appropriate size dent ball to continue. For our demonstrations, we're not actually going to place a dent ball on. But we're going to run the cable through the instrument just to show you how it links together and how it's used. Okay. Let's look at the tool for a second here. Okay, We have a series of beads that run along this piece. They are all interchangeable and removable. Now how do we know they're removable? Well, if we go to a section such as this, we can actually see that we have two holes one here, one there. They're set in by a little set screw. This is our clue that this is where this piece would literally come apart. Okay, now we have a large threaded end here. I'm just going to move down a little ways to remove our small side because the cable actually is in series of steps. We have a large and a small end to accommodate different sizes of stroke cables. Stroke cables is this part here. Okay. We have as the piece that's going to screw on to our end piece. Stroke cable is this part here where the dead ball is actually going to float between. The larger one has a larger uh, brass end piece so you can't feel it from the magnet and has a little bit longer to fit the larger dent balls. Okay? It also fits on to the larger end of the piece. Okay? Fitting this together is basically choosing at what point, how far into the instrument we want to remove dents. Okay? For our demonstrations, we're going to use the piece in its entirety and we can break it down after that if we need to. Remembering that the tool enters through the bell, we have to look at the wrap, the turn. Basically, what we're looking at is how far we want to remove a dent. In this case, we're able to remove a dent in this area. We could possibly reach this dent right here. Okay. We would not know, actually, until we actually put the, the tool inside the instrument to see if we would have it. Our limiting factor here is the size of the dent balls when we get near the handle. The larger dent balls don't allow us to travel past here. What they do is they get stuck in the taper here. This was a design feature originally by Faris to keep the tool centered through the tubing. Okay? I believe there is a redesign in the work that will have a collet that will fit the inside of the bell have these balls the same size as their smaller cousin that allow it to feed and stay centered through the instrument. Okay. Taking the piece, feeding it through. It's as simple as that. We literally just push it through. You can see how far we go. You may want to take a measurement with your hand to identify this line. Pull the piece out. Line it up. 
see how far you can go. In this particular case, we can see that we actually exceed the point that we need to. The choice now, okay, would be to bring this cable back to give us maximum driving power. We could remove one link of the cable. So let's do that. Our choices are, where do we want to remove the link? Obviously, we can't remove the last one because that links us into our small cable. However, I can remove it here. And I can choose to remove one of the larger links, which, of course, will shorten it up by that much. I simply screw this back on. Remembering the distance that we were able to throw it in before, we recheck it and to see. In this particular case, we are too short, so we will have to use the added link. We simply reattach it, place it in there. Having the instrument carefully or in our, our holding jig, we can then thrust and push the dents in. Once we've gone far enough, we can then pull this out. Now, how do we know we've reached these tapered balls? When our piece goes in and there is no movement backwards or forward, that means we are stuck on the balls and we are no longer floating with the dent ball. As long as we have the, the dent ball working, we should have movement forward and back. That's the only way we can tell. If I push too hard, I'll get a series of dents along the outside here. This is no big deal as we're able to rework this area fairly close. Although you should try to remain tapered or uh, using as little force as possible. Hopefully the brass is soft. Okay. Use this tool as much as possible. It'll save you a lot of money. Okay, removing severe dents like this, no longer need to have to have the bolt removed to get these dents.